Today we're going to be going over a custom abutment design. The first step of custom abutment design is marking the annotation, which isn't marked during the scanning workflow. It's a little counterintuitive because we don't actually want to click on the glowing dot that we have here. If you click on the glowing dot, what it actually does is place the annotation towards the lingual side, so the software thinks the lingual side is actually the buckle. The annotation should just be anywhere on the buckle side on the tissue. After marking the annotation, we move on to the insertion direction step. At this stage, we aren't going to be changing the implant or the screw channel direction. Those are always going to stay the same. This insertion direction is just changing the angle of the top of the abutment. What we're changing is just the insertion path for the final crown. So to adjust this, you'll adjust your view to where you think the crown would be inserted from and then hit the Set Direction button to place it. After that, we'll continue forward to get to the parametric design stage. This is the main stage where you get the majority of the abutment design finished. Within this step, there are three different design workflows you could follow. You could do the custom abutment, which gives you a more anatomically supported shape, but you don't have quite as many control points to modify the shape. Next is bar interface, which is typically just a set cylinder for a bar design. And then robotic abutment, which is a more geometric shape, but it gives you a lot of control points for customizing that shape. For, this, for the purposes of this video, we're going to be covering just the robotic abutment workflow. Further down in our menu, the next option we can adjust is the draft angle. This is the angle that adjusts the side walls of the abutment. Typically, we'll leave it at the default 3 degrees for single unit cases, but you might adjust the taper up to 3.5 or 4 degrees to make the angle a little bit more forgiving for bridge units. Next, we can modify the margin shape of our abutment. So you'd click on the Shapes button and move your cursor towards one shape or another to adjust that image. I could move it to a square for more support for a molar, but for this case, since it's an anterior, we're going to make it a little bit more triangular. This margin is going to be changed once we move around the different margin points. This is just for the initial shape. At this point, I will want to zoom in and make some more detailed changes to the margin. Usually, I prefer to work on the margin where I don't have any scans visible. The reason for this is anytime you click on one of the orange dots, a black line appears which shows you a cross-section of your surface scan. So this black line is showing me where the gingiva is, where I'm adjusting my margin. As I'm moving around the margin, I have a grid hovering over my mouse. As I adjust it down, one of the small squares is half a millimeter, and a, the full square is a full millimeter. So I'll adjust this abutment margin. In this case, because it's a titanium abutment, I'll make it about half a millimeter subgingival. I might be able to get away with a little bit more shallow for a hybrid abutment. But once I've adjusted that, I'll rotate 90 degrees and move on to the next margin point. As I pull up my scan again, 
you can get a more clear view of what parts of the gray line are the actual margin and what parts are the adjacent teeth. So I'll pull up this margin, still keeping it mostly subgingival, and at the same time I'll move one of the green dots to adjust the taper of that emergence profile. As I continue moving on, I'll just rotate and adjust the lingual point of the margin. I'd adjust this the same way, though I can leave it fairly shallow for the lingual side. I am getting frequent requests to even do it super gingival to prevent the chance of cement coming into contact with the gingiva. And I'll just keep rotating 90 degrees until I've adjusted all four of the large orange dots. These large orange dots affect the majority of the margin, so once I've marked these, I shouldn't have a lot of changes to make to the smaller orange dots, but I will check each one of those as well. After adjusting the last of the orange dots, you'll want to pull up your surface scan again, just so we can see if there are any remaining exposed bits of the margin. If there's anywhere above the tissue that you still need to lower, you'll have to move the dots closest to it to make that adjustment. Further up, we can adjust the magenta dots to adjust the shoulder width and angle. After you've made the adjustment to one of these dots, you can right-click on the dot and use the option to copy that over to the entire profile. In the middle of the unit, regardless of what angle you're looking at it from, there's a purple dot always floating in the center. You can move that purple dot up or down to move the entire margin without changing its shape. Further up on the unit, at the very top, the small blue dot lets you raise or lower the top section of the abutment, and when you do this, it does still maintain that tapered angle. The larger blue dot right below that will let you change that top angle of the unit. Just keep in mind that this is changing it from the insertion direction that you set earlier. All of the orange dots and blue dot on the top surface of the abutment will let you raise and lower that part of the abutment. So if I wanted to do a molar, I'd raise these four dots to uh, provide some cusp support. But since I'm working on an anterior, I just want to leave that buckle side fairly flat. I could move down most of the lingual dots to, uh, to get rid of that material, but there's a quick way to remove this at a later step, so we'll leave that lingual side as is for right now. The last thing to keep in mind is the minimum thickness. Because I have this case set up as a titanium abutment, I don't really have to worry about the thin areas, so I'll pull on this red slider so I would be aware of any thin spots. If I were doing a hybrid, I'd typically have some thin spots close to the margin area where the titanium base is.
After that, I'll hit next to the sculpt stage, where you'll have all of the same tools we'll use during normal designs. The main disadvantage here is that none of these tools will prevent you from making undercuts. I typically tend to steer clear of the transformation, morphing, and wax knife tool for the most part. The attachments tool I will use fairly frequently, especially for posterior cases. This is the tool that will let me easily make a guidance groove or notch in the side of our unit. I'll create this by going to the holes group and picking the diameter that I'm interested in, and making sure that the default orientation matches my view direction. After that, I'll go to a top view where I can see all the side walls of the abutment, and pull on my screw channel so I know which side has a little bit more thickness to work with. You'll click to first place that cylinder, and then we can make more changes to the position. So I'll pull that a little bit out to make it more shallow. Turn off my scan and make sure that it's not cutting into the margin, so I'll adjust the angle a bit and raise that up. And once I'm happy with the position, you can hit the play button to have that cut applied, and it just makes this little notch into the side. Your end result will wind up a little bit more smoothed out than what we see here after it's out of the milling machine, but for the most part it'll retain that guidance groove. Since this is an anterior case, and it's going to have quite a bit of anti-rotation baked into it having flat sides, I don't really need this guidance groove, so I'm going to get rid of it by right-clicking and deleting it. What I do need to do for this anterior is take care of that lingual side. So I'm going to pull up my prep arch so I'm aware of how much space the crown is probably going to take up and pull up my opposing so I know how much vertical space to leave. As I switch to the plane cut tool, I'm just going to left click and drag a line that cuts through the entire lingual side. It is okay to have this line cut through the margin because it will protect the margin in this case. After you've placed that, you can move around this plane using the red or blue dots as much as you want until you're happy with the position. Once you're happy with that final position for the line, you don't have to click any button to save that, you just switch to any other tool. I'll usually go to the morphing tool next to add a little bit of taper to this lingual side. What you'll want to do is get a perfect side view and grab the bold edge with the morphing tool to pull that in and have a little bit of curvature there. When you make that adjustment, just be aware that you're probably also going to be pulling that forward on the buckle side as well. There's no way to avoid this, but you can easily grab the bold edge on the buckle side and pull that in to get rid of that little bump. Afterwards, you should have a nicely curved abutment. At this point, I may make some final tweaks with the smoothing tool, since smoothing generally won't create undercuts, but most of the time I'll leave it as is with the somewhat sharp edges. As I continue forward, we'll reach our final step, the assembly stage where at this point it automatically creates the screw channel. Because this is a titanium abutment, I'm not really concerned about the screw channel leaving behind some really sharp points at its edge. But if I were doing a hybrid abutment, I'd use this feature on the left, the hole fillet, 
and just bump that up to a tenth of a millimeter. What that does is it just creates a flat edge that it goes up to, so it won't allow it to go any thinner than a tenth of a millimeter to prevent chipping. But for again, for titanium, this isn't a problem, so I'll switch it back to zero millimeters. After that, I can hit next and our abutment design is saved.